this is something I really try to get across on my program. It's unfortunate for us as African American and brown people. We're one, maybe two generations into making real money. So mm -hmm. the need in our community to ever be financially educated, it just was never there. Most of the people who we saw who made money, they wore it on their wrists. They wore it on their back in terms of their clothes, but they never owned anything. You can right. see the biggest drug dealer in the hood driving, you know, some of the best cars and went home to an apartment he was paying rent. Absolutely. But what you're doing, I think, you know, touching on these points is so, so important to help change the mindset of our people. I also want to go back a little bit because we were talking about different um, <clears throat> loan types. Mm -hmm. Talk about FHA. That's typically yeah. for your first time home buyer. Is there a difference between an FHA 203K? I think yeah. that's what you call it. So a 203K is an FHA loan, but it gives you the ability to rehab a property, right? So FHA will give you the rehab money. So if you go, if you want to go buy a foreclosed property, a short sale, um, even if you want to just go buy a regular house from a regular homeowner, right? But maybe they got a pink, a pink bathroom and the kitchen is is terrible. You can use the FHA 203K loan where you get the mortgage and the rehab money all in one loan with a low interest rate and you're able to rehab that house um, to your liking. Um, so it's a phenomenal loan. Requirements minimum right now the requirements is about a 640 credit score and you can put down as little as 3.5% of the purchase price to purchase that home and get the rehab money as well. So it's a great tool um, for someone who's looking to do rehab. So let me make sure I got this clear and I want to make sure my, my, my audience understands. Mm -hmm. FHA loan. That's if Sean goes out, he's buying a, a, a property. Maybe it's my first time. I'm assuming it is not for me to use as a, um, a rental um, property. I'm living in it. You can, you can buy one to four family properties with FHA. Now, if you buy a multifamily, two, three, or four unit property, mm -hmm. you have to live in one of the units. Okay. And they allow that. But if you want to buy strictly investment property, you have no intent of moving in, then no, you cannot use FHA for that property. Okay. And the FHA 203K, that is my loan. And it also has money built in for rehab. Correct. Okay. Talk, talk to me about Fannie. You know, we, we, we hear about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Okay. What's the difference in these conventional loans as opposed so, to FHA? So with Fannie it's a little, it depends on different products. Um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are, are, are the agencies, the government agencies that, that pretty much buy mortgages from lenders, from banks, right? Um, both their guidelines are similar, so to speak. They may have little quirks here and there between the two of them. And as a loan officer, like we know this stuff, but for the general public, I ain't gonna get too deep into that because I don't wanna go over nobody's head, but for the general public, you know, conventional loan, minimum 620 credit score, you can buy one to four family properties. Um, you can buy second home, vacation homes with conventional mortgages, and you can buy investment properties with um, conventional mortgages. Your minimum down payment could be anywhere from three to 5% for a single family. And for multifamilies, depending on the program, it could be anywhere from 5% to 25% to for multifamilies. Okay, so, so stop there for a second. Always mm -hmm. heard, you know, and obviously I bought properties, but I'm playing dumb. Always mm -hmm. heard you have to have 20% down. You just mentioned three to 5%. Correct. What, Correct. Loan, what, what, what products are that that someone would only need to come to the table with three to five percent? Any product that's going to be for your primary residence will always require a minimum down payment between three to five percent. Right. Once you say vacation home or second home or investment property, that's when you need to put down more money. Now, when you put down three to five percent, especially if you're going for a conventional loan. When people say, hey, you should put down 20% when you buy your home, they're, they're really saying that so that way you avoid paying PMI, right? So PMI Explain. is private, private mortgage insurance, and that PMI is insurance that protects the lender in case the, the buyer defaults on their mortgage. Now, the buyer has to pay that monthly fee. Now, depending on your loan amount, 
you know, in New York, I mean, PMI could be four, four to eight hundred dollars extra a month, just depending on your loan amount, right? It can get very expensive. But what I tell people this all the time, and I actually I told Angela Yee this too. I said on the Breakfast Club, PMI is not the devil, right? PMI gives you the ability to put less down, keep more money in your pocket. And, be, and as long as you can afford the mortgage, I don't think PMI is a terrible thing. Because for me personally, right, if I'm buying a half a million dollar home and it's going to require 20% down, that's 100K that I have to put down for this house, not including the closing costs, which will probably be another 25, 30,000. So I'm all out of my pocket, $130,000. Mm-hmm. Now, if I put down, let's just say 10%, which will be 50,000, plus the closing costs, another 25. Now I'm seventy five thousand out of my pocket, so I'm saving myself about fifty, sixty thousand. And if my PMI payment is four hundred dollars a month, you gotta think about ten. That's forty eight hundred dollars a year. So in ten years, you know that's forty eight thousand dollars it would take me to get that money. You know what I'm saying? So like I'd rather keep my my thirty, forty thousand in my pocket, so that way I can go ahead and now put that money and deploy it like little workers and go make me some money. Now, if you can afford to do that, then that's the strategy I would recommend. But if, you, if you're one of those folks, and different strokes for different folks, right? right. Some people just don't want to see PMI. They don't care. They feel like they're throwing away money. They'd rather save the money and put it down. God bless you. Do whatever works for you. You're the CEO of your business. You know, real estate is business, whether it's a primary residence or investment property. So you got to be a CEO. Make your decisions accordingly. It's just my advice. Me personally, I'm OPM other people's money, brother. I don't want to spend my money. I don't want to spend it. I'm cheap. I want to spend your money. So if the bank want to charge me PMI, it's going to mean my payment's going to go up a couple dollars. So be it. I got my 30, 40 K because God forbid another COVID, a COVID 30 come, right? Mm-hmm. Now we in quarantine. When I'm going to send my house, I, I, I need money now. You know what I'm saying? So I'd rather have that money sitting somewhere or deployed, making more money versus all in my house and I can't get it out right away. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.